Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the physiological changes of late pregnancy relevant to anesthesia. Changes seen in pregnancy can be divided into those that aid oxygen delivery and support the increase in uterine blood flow, those that protect against blood loss at delivery, and those that occur as a consequence of the enlarged uterus. The first trimester is the period of most physiological change. The fetus is most at risk from potential teratogens, and physiological changes are stimulated by increased production of progesterone and estrogen by the placenta. At mid to late pregnancy, the mechanical effects of an enlarged uterus causes various physiological consequences. Most physiological changes are reversed and return to pre-pregnancy levels soon after delivery. Changes of the respiratory system There is cranial displacement of the diaphragm and results in reduction in functional residual capacity of 20% from 1.6 liters to 1.3 liters and results in a decrease of residual volume from 1,000 ml to 800 ml and expiratory reserve volume from 700 to 500 ml. Pre-oxygenation is less effective coupled with increased oxygen consumption causes more rapid desaturation. Tidal volume is increased by 35% from 450 to 650 ml, and thus the inspiratory reserve volume and vital capacity are unchanged. Total lung capacity is slightly reduced. This graph shows that from early to late pregnancy, there is 70% increase in alveolar ventilation, 50% increase in minute ventilation, 35% increase in tidal volume, and 15% increase in respiratory rate. The increase in respiratory rate by 15% is stimulated by progesterone-mediated CO2 hypersensitivity. Thereafter, the respiratory rate plateaus. Tidal volume increases by 35% and it increases rapidly in the first trimester and then steadily to term. Divergence of minute ventilation and alveolar ventilation is due to progesterone-induced increase in respiratory rate and tidal volume leads to increased minute ventilation and as dead space is unchanged, alveolar ventilation is increased proportionally more. Other changes include reduced chest wall and lung compliance resulting in increased work of breathing, increased metabolic demand for oxygen by around 50%, the increased demand for oxygen is compensated by the increase in cardiac output so there is a small rise in PaO2 of about 7.5 mmHg. Reduction in PaCO2 causes a mild respiratory alkalosis. PaCO2 is 32 mmHg and pH increases to 7.44. This would shift the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve downwards and to the left were it not for an increase in maternal 2,3 dPG which offsets this effect. The increased 2,3 dPG shifts the P50 from 26 mmHg to 30 mmHg. There is airway mucosal edema from fluid retention. Increased breast size may impede intubation. Anesthetic implications Various physiological changes of pregnancy increases the risk of hypoxemia, such as upper airway edema, especially in preeclampsia, Enlarged tongue and epiglottis, increasing the difficulty of intubation. Enlarged heavy breast impede laryngoscopy. Increased oxygen consumption. Diaphragmatic splinting, reducing FRC and effectiveness of pre-oxygenation. To minimize the risk of desaturation due to reduced FRC, pre-oxygenate the mother for 3 minutes with FiO2 1.0 or 8 vital capacity breaths. Head up or ramp positioning will reduce encroachment of the closing volume on the FRC. The reduced FRC means that the onset of the effect of volatile anesthetic agents will be more rapid. Congested and more edematous upper airway risk being traumatized by instrumentation. A smaller tracheal tube may be necessary. Relative hyperventilation and low normal PaCO2 should be maintained, but not below 20 to 25 mmHg that uterine blood flow is compromised. Changes in the cardiovascular system This graph shows that 
heart rate increases by 25%, stroke volume increases by 35%, and cardiac output increases by 50% from early to late pregnancy. The 50% increase in cardiac output, majority of the increase in cardiac output occurs in the first trimester with an increase of about 30% by 12 weeks. It peaks by 28 weeks at 50%, after which it plateaus. During labor, cardiac output may rise by an additional 45%, and post-delivery, the autotransfusion of blood that occurs with uterine contraction may cause a further increase. Women with pre-existing cardiac disease are likely to decompensate relatively early in the pregnancy, in labor, or post-delivery. Some studies have shown a decrease in cardiac output in the third trimester, but it is thought that this did not account for aortocaval compression. Stroke volume experiences a 35% increase. The majority of early increase in cardiac output is due to an increase in stroke volume. This line has a steeper incline in the first trimester and then a gentler slope up to 35% at 28 weeks when it plateaus. Heart rate increases by 25%, a gentle up slope initially and then a steeper rise in the second trimester which accounts for the later increase in cardiac output. This can be thought of as the opposite to the stroke volume increase, packet arrhythmias are more common. Other changes include decreased SVR by 20%, systolic blood pressure decreased by 10%, diastolic blood pressure decreased by 20%, CVP unchanged, pulmonary vascular resistance decreased by 30%, PCWP unchanged, upward leftward displacement of the heart, ECG, LAD, SD depression, T wave flattening, risk of aortocaval compression when supine, Total weight gain average 12 kg, 50% of this due to increase in plasma volume and interstitial fluid, mild cardiac dilation and heart murmurs due to increased plasma volume and total body water, reduced sensitivity to circulating vessel pressures, appears that uterine circulation may be more sensitive to this than the systemic. Uterine blood flow can be defined as uterine artery pressure minus uterine venous pressure divided by uterine vascular resistance. Increase of uterine perfusion to 10% of cardiac output with uterine blood flow increasing from 50 mL per minute to 700 mL per minute. A reduction in the maternal blood pressure or an increase in UVP or UVR will lead to a reduction in UBF which is not autoregulated. Aortocaval compression occurs to some degree in all women Femoral vein ultrasound suggests that it is significant only in 30%. Compression of the gravid uterus on great vessels reduces the venous return to the heart and thus cardiac output and blood pressure reduces. Turning from the lateral to the supine position at term in some women may decrease cardiac output by up to 30%. UBF may be compromised even in those who are asymptomatic because the uteroplacental circulation does not autoregulate. UBF is crucially dependent on the pressure gradient. Compensation by increase in sympathetic tone, diversion of venous return through the effective collateral circulation of azagos vein and the vertebral venous plexus. Despite these mechanisms, supine hypotension may still occur around 20% of women under anesthesia. Most anesthetists continue to use a wedge or lateral tilt of up to 15 degrees, although there is no evidence to suggest it is beneficial. Anesthetic implications, appropriate positioning to avoid aortocaval compression, maintain cardiac output and systemic blood pressure to ensure continued perfusion to the uteroplacental unit, and be aware of the consequence of fluid loading in a mother who is already waterlogged. Hematological changes. This graph shows that RBC volume increases by 20% and plasma volume increases by 45%, from early to late pregnancy. RBC volume increases by 20%. It drops in early pregnancy. It is back at the pre-pregnancy level at the end of the first trimester and increases after 10 weeks gestation until term. This increase in the RBC volume is greater with iron supplementation. Plasma volume increases by 45%. It increases from about 6 weeks in pregnancy. At the end of the first trimester, it is 15% above pre-pregnancy values. At 32 weeks, it arrives at a peak of 45% increase and then plateaus. Physiological anemia of pregnancy 
is a result of the discrepancy between the increases in RBC volume and plasma volume. The maximal difference between the two lines should be between 30 to 32 weeks. Other hematological changes include increase in WBC count, increase in fibrinogen from 2.5 to 6 grams per liter, and all clotting factors except for 11 and 13, decrease in platelet count despite increased production due to increased activity and consumption, normal coagulation profile, decreased fibrinolysis by a plasminogen inhibitor that is derived from the placenta. This table shows the difference between the various hematological parameters between a non-pregnant and a term pregnancy. For non-pregnant, Hb is 14, term pregnancy is 12 grams per deciliter, hematocrit in non-pregnant is 40 to 42 percent, in term pregnancy is 31 to 34 percent, RBC count changes from 4.2 to 3.8 times 10 to the power of 12 per liter. WBC count changes from 6 to 9 times 10 to the power of 9 per liter. ESR increases from 10 to 58. Platelet count changes from 150 to 400 to 120 to 400 times 10 to the power of 9 per liter. Anesthetic implications. The risk of venous thromboembolism is increased by 5 times. Routine preventive measures should be used. Pharmacological intervention may be necessary if a mother has additional risk factors for VTE. Low molecular weight heparin is given routinely after caesarean section or other surgery in many units. These are my references. Thank you.